Welcome to lesson 6.1. You did it. You're on level six. You passed four, you passed five, and you're well on your way to being a math genius. I'm proud of you. And you should be proud of you too. So we're moving on to a whole new chapter of life. We've done triangles, a whole bunch of stuff with that. Now we're moving into polygons. What is a polygon? Maybe we should figure that out to get started. So a polygon is a shape with at least, at least three straight sides and angles. Why three? Well, look, if I had two sides, is there any way to make a, a real shape? No, you have to connect the sides. So you need at least three to make a shape. Let me put that ugly thing away. And just for those of you who are interested in language, this word it has Greek roots. Poly, meaning many. So when you see the word poly, that always means many. And gan. Gan in Greek means angles. So the word polygon literally means many angles. So there's many different kinds, and they all have different names. I'm just going to throw some names out there for you. Something with a polygon with three sides, you should know this, is a triangle. A four-sided polygon would be a quadrilateral. We're going to skip a few, and we're going to go to this guy, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. If you know it, write it down right now and pause the video. If you don't, this would be an octagon. Octo meaning eight, like an octopus, which has eight tentacles. And then finally, we got this guy over here. Let's count it up. He has one, two, and I should say she also. She might have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine sides. You might not have heard this one, but this is called a nonagon. All right? And that nana is nine, nine-sided, or nine-angled. All right, so these are the different kind of, just some examples of polygons. Now let's start talking about the angles, all right? And there's a cool little trick you can use to uh, calculate the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. So let's look over here. We'll start with a triangle. Now a triangle, as we have learned, has three sides, right? And if you were to look at it, it's one triangle in the picture. If you were to sum up the three angles, the sum of these angles in a triangle are always how much? 180 degrees. All right? The sum of the interior angles of a triangle is always 180. Always. All right? Now, can we use this fact to find the sum of other polygons? Sure. Well, let's look at this quadrilateral. All right? Now, it has four sides, and it's saying, how many triangles do you see here? And if you look at it like this, you don't see any. But look what you can do. You can cut this quadrilateral in half. But, oh, that's ugly. Oh, all right. And boom, you cut it in half. Now, how many triangles do you see here? Two triangles. Well, since there's two triangles in here, and I know the first triangle is 180 degrees, and I know the second angle triangle is 180 degrees, to find out the sum of all the interior angles here, all I have to do is 2 times 180. All right? Because there's two triangles in there, I multiply that by 180, and I get 360. And that's true. All quadrilaterals have 360 degrees in them. Well, let's look at this pentagon. This has five sides. A pentagon, penta meaning five, has five sides. And let's see how many triangles we can make. One, two, three. So there's three triangles that you can draw here, and they all have 180 degrees in them. So if I wanted to find the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon, well, I just have to do three, which is the amount of triangles, times 180, right? And that gives me 540 degrees. And that's true. The sum of the interior angles of a pentagon is 540 degrees. Let's keep going with this. A hexagon. Well, let's see, that's a six-sided figure, hexa meaning six, all right? Let's see how many triangles we get here. One, two, three, four. There's four triangles, and each one has 180 degrees in it, right? And if I wanted to find the sum here, all I have to do is four times, well, there's four triangles, so I have to do four times 180, 180 is for each triangle, and that gives me 720 degrees. And that's the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon. 
Well, you might be finding a pattern here because maybe I could find it for an n gun. And n gun means any amount, okay? So if I wanted to find the sum of the interior angles for any polygon, is there a formula that you're starting to see emerge here? Well, let's see. A six-sided figure has four triangles, a five-sided figure has three triangles, a four-sided triangle has two triangles, and three-sided triangle has two one triangle. If you see the pattern here, if you subtract two from the amount of the sides, that tells you how many triangles there are. All right, so if I have n sides, if I subtract two, that tells me how many triangles there are. So six, subtract two, four triangles. Now, to figure out the sum of the interior angles, all I have to do is find out how many triangles there are and multiply that by 180. So to find out the sum of the interior angles, n minus 2 tells me the number of triangles, number of triangles, and I multiply that by 180. And that gives me the sum. Well, just so you know, we're going to carry this over. So you could use this formula to find the sum of any polygon, the sum of the interior angles of any polygon. So let's try it. Let's see if this works. So we want to find the sum of the interior angles of the following finger. So here's our interior angles. These are on the inside. And I want to find out what all of these angles would add up to. The thing to start doing is, well, let's find out how many sides there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. All right, so let's plug eight in for n. So this is our formula. The sum is equal to 180, which is how many degrees in a triangle, and n minus two. So if n equals eight, that's the amount of sides, n is the amount of sides, we plug that into our formula. 8 minus 2 is 6, so that means in an 8-sided figure, there's going to be 6 triangles. We do 180 times 6, and that means our sum of the interior angles is going to be 10,080. All right? Wow, that was easy. So this has, the sum of all these angles is 1080. What is the sum of the interior angles of a heptagon? Well, to do this, we should probably find out what a heptagon is. A heptagon is a polygon with seven sides. All right, so there's seven sides. So all we have to do is plug seven in for our n. So we're going to do that over here. All right, n is seven. So the sum is equal to 180 times seven minus two, which is five. So there's five triangles in a heptagon. So the sum is equal to, let's see, that would be 900 degrees. All right, let's try a somewhat more challenging problem. In this question, the sum of the interior angles of a polygon are 1260. So they give us the sum. How many sides does the polygon have? So I'm going backwards here. We know the sum. We don't know the number of sides. So this is the same exact problem, but this time we're not plugging in n. We're plugging in the sum. So for S, the sum is equal to 1260. So to solve this, we're just going to plug in for S now. So instead of S, we're going to write 1260 is equal to 180 n minus 2. To solve this problem, the first thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 180. All right, we divide both sides by 180. That cancels the 180 out on this side. 1260 divided by 180 is 7, which equals, well, n minus 2. That's all that's left. To solve for n, which is the amount of sides, well, we'll put a line down the middle. Let's add 2 to both sides to get n by itself. And we get n is equal to 9. So how many sides does this have? This would have 9 sides, which is also called a nonagon. Perfect. All right, and now one more problem. We want to find the measure of A. And by A, I mean B. Look at that magic. Yeah, we want to find the measure of B. Now, this is a little different because we don't know, we, sorry, we have three of the angles, but we don't know the fourth angle. And what we could use is the same formula again to find out what the sum should be, and then 
subtract the three angles to find out what the missing angle is. So in this example, we have four sides. One, two, three, four. All right? So we're going to find out what the sum of a four-sided figure is. So the sum is equal to 180. We know n is equal to 4. 4 minus 2. When we do this again, we get sum is equal to 180 times two triangles. So the sum of a four-sided figure is 360. All right? That's what our sum should be. Now, to find out what the missing angle is, we do like we did with the triangles when we want to find a missing angle. All we have to do is take 360 and subtract these angles to find the missing angle. All right? The other way to do it is to set this equal to x. And you'd say x plus 105 plus 30 plus 95 is equal to 360. All right? These four angles are equal to 360. I subtract these all now, so I subtract 105, I subtract 30, I subtract 95, and I subtract those all from the other side, so I subtract 105, I subtract 30, and I subtract 95. When I do that, I get x is equal to, oh man, I'm going to try to do this in my head, I'll see if I can do it. Let's see, 135 plus 95, 140, 2, 230, 230 minus this is 130 degrees. Check me, see if I'm wrong on your calculator. So we know this missing angle is 130. Now the easier way to do that is just take the sum. Remember, just do 360 and subtract all the angles to find the missing angle. And that gives you 130 degrees. Sweet! <clears throat> all right. Now we're going to get a little more complicated here because what we're trying to do is find each angle of our regular polygon. This is a little different. Now we're not finding the sum. For this we want to find each angle of a regular polygon. And it's probably good to know what regular means. When we say regular, that means all sides and angles are congruent. All right, So it's not all over the place. Each angle in this and each side is congruent. So we have five, side, five angles, five sides, all congruent. We want to find out what one of these is. That's what each is trying to say. We want to just find one. And to do that, let's start with finding the sum. So this is a five-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five. So our n is equal to five. And we just do the sum is equal to 180. Five minus two. I mean, yeah, five minus two. So the sum is equal to 180 times three. So the sum is equal to 540. Now to find out what each one is, well, I could just... Divide this into the five equal angles. And so each angle would be equal to 108. So each one of these angles is 108. And all I did was divide by the amount of angles. Now to make this a just general formula, to find each angle, okay, we're going to say the sum of each angle, and I'm going to put that little e there so we know we're talking about only one angle. We do the same formula. 180, n minus 2, divided by, so after we find the sum, we divide that by how many sides we have. So we divide that by n. And we use this formula when we find, want to find one angle. So let's try to do this. What is the measure of each interior angle of a regular quadrilateral? So remember, a quadrilateral is four sides, so n equals 4. To do this, well, let's just put it in. So the sum of each is going to be equal to 180 times 4 minus 2 over 4, which is the amount of sides. I just plugged in for n. The sum of each angle, therefore, is 180 times 2, which is 360. Sorry, 4 minus 2 is 2, and I'm just multiplying that by 180, divided by 4. Now that I got the sum of the quadrilateral, sum of the angles in the quadrilateral, I just divide that by how many angles there are. So there's four. So the sum of each angle is going to be 90. Sorry, the measure of each angle is 90. All right, what is the measure of each interior angle of a regular hexagon? Same thing. A hexagon, if you look this up, has six sides. So do the sum of each is just 180 
times 6 minus 2, that's the sum, all over 6, because that's how many sides there are. Once again, we're going to just do this. This is 180 times 4 over 6. I'm just going to keep doing this out. 720, 180 times 4 is 720 divided by 6. And so each angle, all right, is going to be equal to, well, let's see, that's 1, 2, 0, 120 degrees. Easy peasy. Final thing, exterior angles, all right? I know this video is getting a little long. Just bear with me one more time. We want to find the measure of an exterior angle of a polygon. And the exterior is the one on the outside. If you keep drawing a straight line from an angle, that is the exterior angle. To do that, you find the measure of each interior angle, and you subtract that from 180. So let's say we have a triangle here, okay? And we'll say this is an equilateral. We know there's 60, 60, and 60, okay? We found this each angle. To find this exterior angle, all right, all I have to do is do 180 minus the interior angle, minus 60, which is 120, because that's a straight line. We're just using the fact that that's a linear pair. And that's all you do. You find out what the interior angle is, and you subtract that from 180, and that will tell you the exterior angle. So what is the measure of an exterior angle of a hexagon? Well, the first thing we have to do is find the measure of each interior angle, right? We do that by saying a hexagon has six sides. So to do that, we plug this in, and look at that, we already figured out this answer. So we found out that each one of these is 120 degrees, all right? So each angle is equal to 120 degrees. To find out what this exterior angle is right here, to find the exterior angle, all you gotta do is 180, minus 120, right? Because this is just a straight line. 180 is the total line, minus 120 is 60 degrees. And that is how much your exterior angle is. So just to repeat, you find what each interior angle is, and then subtract that from 180. All right, guys, I know this video was a little long. Thanks for bearing with me. You're great, you're awesome, and don't step on a crack, because you'll break your mama's back. It's a fact. Oh, I just tried.